In the fall of 2019, I sat down for a conversation with Dr. John Hayes, the 16th president of Southwestern Oklahoma State University. We discussed John's unique and inspiring Swasu story. How a young man from Willa, Greer County, Oklahoma, came to this hilltop working part-time busting up concrete and sweeping floors on a scholarship that he had had arranged thanks to the help of then President Dr. Al Harris. How John's education here and the experiences he had at Southwestern led to a successful career as a certified public accountant and eventually how he was able to return to this hilltop to serve as Swasu's president and to lead us through some of the uh, greatest challenges as well as greatest opportunities the university has ever faced. John was an integral, essential part of the life of the Swasu community. And his involvement with our alumni, Ameritai and friends, be it through volunteering, be it through advising, be it through simply connecting and being present, John always found a way to make sure that the Bulldogs knew he cared about them, he was proud of them, and he was one of them. We didn't know when we sat down for that interview that just over a year later, we would lose Dr. Hayes as part of the horrible spread and outbreak of the novel coronavirus and the COVID-19 pandemic. And we still aren't quite sure how to think of Swasu without John Hayes. It's our hope, as we mark one year since his death today, that this video, which we're releasing, will serve to inspire, will serve to remind us of his legacy, and will help us all to smile and to reaffirm our own commitment to this institution that John loved so very much. President Hayes, we honor you. President Hayes, we miss you. We didn't really have counselors at our school back then. And so, you know, if you want to go to college, you kind of had to do it kind of on your own. And of course, my dad was a blacksmith. He told me, he said, you know, you probably should get an education because you're not as crafty as your older brother. <laughs> so that's kind of, I started thinking about it, but I didn't really have any financial resources to go to school. and. I never applied for scholarships. Nobody encouraged me really to apply for scholarships. So my brother and I went to California where my cousin lived and I ended up driving a AAA tow truck. It was a nighttime job and I had a lot of time to read and think about things. And I thought, yeah, I've got to go to school. So I come back to Oklahoma, joined the National Guard. And one of the kids from Willow was in the FFA. And he said, we're having a domino tournament. And he said, would you like to be my partner? And I said, well, yeah. So that evening we go to, to the domino tournament to raise money for FFA. And this kid and I, Benny was his name, we end up in the finals with the superintendent of schools and a other gentleman from Mancom, and we won the tournament. And uh, Frank Hobbs, who was the superintendent at Granite at the time, he said, John, you want to go to college? And I said, I'd love to go to college, but I don't have any money. He said, you come over to my office tomorrow and we'll do a little talking. I said, okay. So I go over, we sat down and he said, uh, where do you want to go to school? And I said, well, you know, where, I, whatever I can do, I guess, Southwestern is an obvious choice because it, you know, it's close. He said, let me call the president. So he calls Al Harris, who happened to be president at the time. And Al said, uh, I'm assuming, uh, I'm saying to the Frank Hobbs, the superintendent, that, well, what's his, how, what's his grades? What kind of ACT scores did he have? And 
and I had pretty good scores and my grades were good. And so he said, well, you just send him up here. I'll give him a scholarship and a job. And so that's how I got started at Southwestern. I'd also thought about going to law school. And what I'd read was that accounting was really a good background for business and for law. And so what I ended up majoring in was accounting with a minor in economics and a minor in political science. Yes, I, I mean, now my mother went to school here for one semester in 1935, I think. Uh, I was the, uh, and still the only one that got a degree. Now my brother uh, had a lot of college, but he ended up in the craftsmanship because he's got the talent for it. I was living in Oklahoma City. I'm summertime, it's hot. And I remember going down Robinson Avenue and I looked up and I said, what in the world are you doing here? You're from Willow, Oklahoma, you know, population then about a hundred. And so uh, I bet it was not two weeks after that, I get a call from Southwestern and said, we have an opening for an assistant business manager. And I said, well, I'm on my way to uh, put in my application. And sure enough, I was hired as the assistant business manager. And Cliff Camden was the business manager at the time. Dr. Harris was still president. And one of the things that I do recall about that uh, position is we had never had a clean audit. And to do that, I had to build a plant ledger. And that, I had to go back and research all the land that we had acquired, what the original cost was, and I had to go through newspaper articles. And, but we did, uh, I did end up getting that done. And the next year, uh, when we were audited, we got a, that was our first clean audit. And that, you know, that, that was the beginning. And in 1990, uh, Joanna Hibbler uh, became president. And I was offered an opportunity as a president's job at a junior college. And so I went into, uh, Joanna, do you want me to stay here and work for you or do I have this other opportunity? She said, I'd like for you to stay. That's how I recall it. So I stayed at Southwestern. And so I said, okay. And we started in 1986, we started putting money into our physical plant operation because you cannot have as much land and buildings right. as we had and not have adequate resources yeah. to take care of it. So in 86, our first project was some new lighting and fixing up some sidewalks. We put new windows in the old science building. So we got started in 1986, and you know, it has not stopped. When he came here in 1960, the enrollment was around 1,500. Well, during the 60s, that was a tumultuous time. We were so from 60 to 75, that enrollment pattern changed significantly. We went from, I'm thinking it was around 1,500. When in 1974, it was like 5,500 students. So, you know, a lot of people talk about Dr. Harris being so tight-fisted and he operated during a time when there wasn't a lot of money and there was a lot of growth. And he managed that quite well. the quality of education. And they said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, when you think about a student comes in, they spend four or five years, whatever, getting a degree. Thank you. I'd like for you to know how many people we've had graduate from this institution that have made tremendous success out of their lives. Now, is it 100% because of Southwestern? No, but that period in their life their quality of education they got 
it led them to be very successful. We'd recognize distinguished graduates every year for years, you know, maybe two, maybe one, maybe three. But there were so many people out there that have done so well, they need to be recognized. And that's one of the things I thought would be appropriate. If you don't have the resources from the state to help offset the cost of operation, that puts an impact on the student. You've got to have resources to do the job. And that's why under today's atmosphere, if you will, we've got to have, and I mean all schools, private and public, have got to have private resources come in to help continue to do what we do best. In the early 60s, the state paid about 80% of the cost. When I left in 2010 as an administrator, that had shifted down to 50-50 maybe or 60-40 and I'm talking about 40 percent by the state and today my understanding is it's around 30-35 percent for Southwestern. So that means more tuition had to be uh, generated to provide the necessary resources to carry on. Right. And that's why uh, scholarships are so critical. We need uh, research and development going on all the time. You know, so many things have happened over the years because some gentleman or some lady dedicated their lives to researching maybe a particular thing, whether it's uh, the Salk vaccine, yeah. polio, and whether it's Madame Curie and the way back there. I mean, it, it's, it's important. Overall, I think it's very critical that we have higher education. The fight against Ignorance and intolerance, and intolerance cannot go on without being met somehow. And higher education is significant in that effort. You know, we don't just have college to train you to be an accountant or this or that, or whatever. And if they're honest, if, they're, if they have integrity and be truthful, I mean, all those things. 